According to the World Health Organization, WHO, health is not merely the absence of any disease. Health is a whole, whole lot. It's not just enough to say, I don't have malaria, I don't have headache, therefore I'm well, or my hands are, are good, my legs are good, my head is good, my stomach is good. That does not mean you are healthy. There are a lot of people who are physically healthy, but they are broken. And one of the things that makes us incomplete when it comes to health, perfect health, is ingratitude. With these words, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Ege Meyo Abu. Today is Wednesday, the 15th day of November, 2023. It is Wednesday of the 32nd week in ordinary time. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Wisdom. Wisdom, chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. Our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 82, and our gospel passage comes from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. First reading. A reading from the book of Wisdom. Listen, O kings, and understand. Learn, O judges of the earth, of the ends of the earth. Give ear, you that rule over multitudes, and boast of many nations. For your dominion was given you from the Lord, and your sovereignty from the Most High. Who will search out your works and inquire into your plans? Because as servants of his kingdom, you did not rule rightly, nor keep the law, nor walk according to the purpose of God. He will come upon you terribly and swiftly, because severe judgment falls on those in high places. For the lowliest man may be pardoned in mercy, but mighty men will be mightily tested. For the Lord of all will not stand in awe of anyone, nor show deference to greatness, because he himself made both great and small, and he takes thought for all alike. But a strict inquiry is in store for the mighty. To you then, O monarchs, my words are directed that you may learn wisdom and not transgress. For they will be made holy who observe holy things in holiness. And those who have been taught them will find a defense. Therefore, set your desire on my words. Long for them, and you will be instructed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Arise, O God, judge the earth. Arise, O God, judge the earth. Do justice for the weak and the orphan. Give justice to the poor and afflicted. Rescue the weak and the needy. Set them free from the hand of the wicked. Arise, O God, judge the earth. I have said to you, you are gods, and all of you sons of the Most High. 
and yet, like men, you shall die. You shall fall like any of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on the face, on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Said Jesus, We are not ten cleansed. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. All nine were healed of their disease, but only one was made well. To be healthy is more than not feeling pain in your body. To be healthy is more than having all bodily functions intact. To be healthy goes beyond, you know, needing drugs or therapy. To be healthy is to be completely well. It is not enough for us to achieve physical health. We must achieve or we must have, you know, wholesome health. Or how do I put it now? We must, we must also have psychological health and well-being. To be well is much more important than to be healthy. And the difference between one who is physically healthy and one who is completely well, totally healthy, is gratitude. Gratitude, yes. Giving thanks, the ability to be grateful. So long as you are not grateful for your life, for what you have, there is something wrong. You are not completely healthy until you are grateful. There is a connection between gratitude and faith and health. There is a strong connection. And that is what we learn in our gospel passage today. Jesus Christ was expecting the ten to come back 
to give thanks, but only one. And he was a Samaritan. That is, he was a foreigner. The moment he realized that he had been made well, he came back immediately praising God. And, you know, he prostrated before Jesus to thank him. A lot of us complain a lot about our life. I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have that, I don't have that. And you know, you know, a lot of us believe that our problems are caused by our location. And so it is a prayer of the average Nigerian today to travel abroad to the place where all things will be well. Because here, all things are not well. But you only need to count your blessing to realize that that which you are looking for abroad is even here. The difference is just gratitude. Gratitude is very important. So long as you are grateful, so long as you count your blessing, you will always see the hand of God everywhere in your life. Yes, admit it. Nothing is, nothing is working in this country. Things are here. Things are, you know, we can go on and on, you know, complaining with all the complaints, with all the things that have gone wrong. We can go on to talk about our leaders. In fact, our first reading today was written for our leaders. Anyone in position of authority, God is saying that all power belongs to God. All power, all authority comes from God. God has put you where you are. And God is going to judge you based on how you have used that power. He said, mighty men are tested mightily. And so, if you are in any position of power at all, whether a clergy like me, spiritual authority, or whether you're a politician exercising civil authority, whether you work in the government, in any level at all, you are a person of authority. You are holding power. You exercise power. And remember that you shall give account of how you have exercised that power. Whether you have used the resources meant for the people for your own personal needs or whether you have actually made sure you give life to the people. We can go on and on to complain about our country, but we just need to look around to see that even in the midst of the hardship, in the midst of the crisis, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of the strikes, the incessant strikes here and there, <laughs> we still have a reason to give thanks. No matter how difficult your life may be, there is always something to be grateful for. There is always something. And it is only when you are grateful, that is when you begin to see what God has really done for you. When you are complaining, when you have a negative mindset, you only see your problems. You only see problems, you don't see solutions. But when you begin to give thanks, what if these problems are actually blessings in disguise? That is an important question. Eh? That question changes everything. We see problems. It's one thing to see a problem. It's another thing to see a solution. It is one thing to have received healing. Ten lepers, they beg Jesus. Jesus, please heal us. It's one thing to be healed of your leprosy. It's another thing to be made well. And you can only be made well when you give thanks. My brother, my sister, Learn to give thanks. Learn to be grateful. In every circumstance, give thanks. St. Paul tells us, whether in all circumstances, give thanks. Whatever it is, offer it to God. Be grateful at all times. There is power in gratitude. There is great power in gratitude. Give thanks. Yes, the country is hard. Still be grateful to God. Who knows? Maybe God allows this hardship so that we can bring out our creativity. So that we can begin to think of solutions. We can think of how to help one another. 
Because we are, we, we are used to fighting each other. There is no love. You know, one of, that is one of our biggest problems as Nigerians in this country today. We hate each other. The, hate, the, 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 the amount of energy and time we devote towards fighting each other, towards, you know, trying to survive on each other. If we devote that same time to thinking of, to looking for practical solutions to the problems that affect all of us, I bet you, you will begin to see raw genius. You begin to see creativity. You begin to see solutions. You begin to see new inventions. You begin to see great things because God gave us great intel intellect. And God, and, and we will never know our, 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 our capacity. You will never know what you are capable of doing until you sit down to say, let me solve one problem for this country. Let me help to alleviate one plight. Or let me just make life good for one person. And you begin to see great things. You begin to see how blessed you are. Until you count your blessing, you will not know that you are blessed. It is easy to say, oh, I have nothing to be grateful for. It's easy to give excuses. The other nine gave different excuses. There are so many excuses that they could have given. Uh, after all, what, what did he really do? He's not the one that made me well. He's my obedience. He said I should go and show myself to the priest, and I'm, I'm showing myself to the priest. I'm, I'm well. Why should I give him thanks? Some, of, some people will say, I will thank him later. Thank him now. Now, give thanks to God now. And when this one is over, some of them will say, oh, uh, now that I'm no longer a leper, that means I can no longer beg. Let me go and look for something to do. When I'm able to do something, when I'm able to provide for my family again, then I will come and give thanks. Give thanks now. Give thanks now. This is the best time to give thanks. There's, there, there, there should be no excuse for ingratitude. There should be no excuse because giving thanks moves us beyond the level of health or of physical health to total wellness. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God continue to shower his blessings upon us and to open our hearts, our hearts to give thanks to God Almighty. Finally, today we remember Saint Albert the Great. He was a great writer, a great pre preacher, a great philosopher. Even he was also very good in the natural sciences, in terms of botany, biology, and all that. He was the teacher of Saint Thomas Aquinas a Dominican priest, a great theologian, a great philosopher. In fact, we put uh, St. Abba the Great at par with uh, uh, Aristotle. To tell you how great this man is, his writings still survive today. At some point, he was the bishop, he was the bishop of Regensburg in Germany. As we remember St. Abba today, we pray for divine wisdom, that wisdom that God gave to him. We pray that God will continue to shower that wisdom upon the earth as we continue to study, as we study God's word, as we study our natural environment, that we may be able to make positive contributions that will better the lot of mankind. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.